the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce is pleased to bring you this special presentation of the State of the City, brought to you by the following sponsors. Hello, I'm Kaylin Risvolt, President and CEO of the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us for our annual State of the City event. Whether you're joining us in person at one of our watch locations or virtually, we are thrilled to see your interest in our community. The Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce and the City of Naperville are excited that we can still bring you this program in a way that follows regulations and also gives you the power of choice on how you want to experience it. Watching from your home or office or joining us at one of our watch parties, it is certainly a new way to enjoy our State of the City address. Our annual State of the City event is a fantastic signature event of ours, and we want you, our community members and our friends, to know that we are still working hard to move your business forward. I would be remiss if I didn't profusely thank the City of Naperville and Mayor Steve Cherico. The City has always been a fantastic partner to the Chamber, and this year has proven to be no different. We have navigated this changing landscape together again in order to bring the community the best possible access to this great resource of information about the future of Naperville. This event is a hallmark program of our cities and we thank you, Mayor, for your fortitude in a difficult year and your desire to always bring more to the people of Naperville, just as we do at the Chamber. The Chamber would like to thank our presenting sponsors, Navistar and Spanese, for their generous support of today's event. We also want to thank BMO Harris and Naperville Bank & Trust for being our event sponsors. This event would not be possible without your support. And it is through that continued support of our sponsors, which allows the Chamber to continue to provide unmatched programming and access to information which moves business forward. We are thrilled to have Mayor Steve Cherico with us today to present the 2021 State of the City Address. Mayor Cherico is a lifelong Naperville resident, proud business owner, and tireless advocate for our businesses. Now in his second term, he continues to be forward thinking in his approach to responsible development, financial responsibility, and our community's safety. He has provided smart leadership throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and is fully committed to both our community's health and safety, as well as Naperville's economic recovery. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to our mayor, Steve Cherico. Thank you, Kaylin. And thank you all for joining me today virtually for our State of the City Address. Even though we're not here together in person, I'm thankful for the Chamber's creativity and flexibility so that I can share the City's accomplishments in this unforgettable year. As always, thank you to Kaylin and her team for hosting this event. Under Kaylin's leadership, our business community was prepared for the challenges of 2020, and their resiliency has proven to be remarkable. I also want to thank former board chairman Ian Holzhauer and a special congratulations to the new chair, Christina Caton Kitchell. Both are true professionals who have used their expertise and talents to make the chamber stronger. Congratulations, Christina, and thank you, Ian. A special thank you as well to NCTV 17's Liz Spencer and her team for their partnership in producing today's event and videos. And of course, I want to thank my wife, Julie, and our entire family. Those we love are the foundations we lean on, especially in times of uncertainty. Whether personal or professional, all of us have had to find our footing over the past year. When everything familiar about our world changed, we had to change with it. I think they call that pivoting. And pivot really was the word of 2020. I mean, look, it faced some stiff competition from words and phrases like, in these uncertain times, or social distancing, you're on mute, unprecedented. But pivoting is what kept us moving forward. 
For some of us, that meant a switch from the boardroom to the dining room or connecting over Zoom instead of in the office, which, by the way, we are well positioned to do thanks to Money Magazine naming us the third best place to live if you work from home. Or maybe it was moving your business model to focus more online instead of, well, in line. But whatever last year meant to you, one thing is certain. In times of turmoil and uncertainty, we can count on the foundations put in place to lead us to a brighter day. In my State of the City speech last year, I challenged us all to look back on the foundations we've built in order to move forward. And this year, I want to dig deeper on that concept. Just what are these core foundations? How did the structures serve the city in the past 14 months? And how have the defining events of 2020 forced us to take another look at the best way to move Naperville forward? You know, for decades, our city's traditions have made it an award-winning place to live and do business. In the past year, we leaned heavily on many of these traditions. Fiscal responsibility, community, compassion, determination, and entrepreneurship. And yes, change. Change and progress has been part of Naperville's leadership for decades and has led to Naperville being recognized across the country as one of the best cities to live and own a business. The last thing you want from your local government is to be boring or lazy or rely on our past success. As an organization and as a community, we must move ahead in a post-COVID world by recognizing what was successful in the past and what needs to change. At the city, our foundation is built around four core pillars. Many of you watching today are the backbone of our first pillar, our local economy. Helping businesses through the pandemic was, and still is, critical. We put 18 executive orders in place that helped those most impacted by the state shutdown orders. We waived some license renewal permit fees, loosened certain liquor laws, and allowed overnight deliveries to grocery stores. We also waived outdoor seating fees and found creative ways for restaurants to serve people outdoors. We've given almost $85,000 to help residents and businesses pay their utility bills as part of our utility assistance program. And we partnered with the Chamber and Naperville Development Partnership to create the Small Business Assistance Program. So far, 41 businesses have received $205,000 for payroll, rent or mortgage, or other COVID-related expenses. And most of this was paid for by the CARES Act. Let's hear briefly from two of those business owners now. Our last big event was uh, March 12th of 2020. Uh, we had about 220 people we were doing an event for. And then the very next day, the governor announced the closure of just about everything. Before the pandemic, we had approximately like 250. Yes, but then, but then as soon as the pandemic hit it, we lost almost like 100 students. So we had a couple of different options. Option one would have been to shut down for six months at a minimum and try to reemerge uh, or kind of reinvent how we operate our business. Most of our events are 50, 75, 100, 200, 500. We switched gears and started offering meals of four for $36 that we were delivering to the Naperville community for free. And um, that was able to keep our staff that we had in place going, not you know covering all expenses, but at least slow the bleed, if you will. As soon as like a shutdown comes, and, uh, and obviously none of our students want to go outside of their home, so that was a little bit challenging. However, we quickly transfer everything to the, our online classes. Our ultimate goal is we want our students to be the great individual in the future and then becoming a leader. Uh, you know, when they grow up. So that's what we're trying to do. We ended up being down about 47% in our annual revenue for the year with the COVID in 2020. Uh, and that's a huge hit for any small business. Um, I don't know very many companies that can stay afloat with that kind of loss of revenue. Um, so we were grateful when, when we heard about this grant, we applied for it, we were accepted and, and awarded um, the grant. Um, we used those funds to pay for our rent here um, for about a month and a half, roughly. Um, and you know, if we didn't have that grant, obviously we'd have to find funds elsewhere, whether we're taking it from a loan um, or um, you know, just personal loans back to the business to make sure that uh, you know, all the bills are being paid. A lot of our expenses, if we're talking about the business, obviously going with the payroll 
and then rent. Uh, however, as soon as the pandemic started, obviously we are having a hard time to keep paying for the rent and all things like that. So when I submitted the application, so I was uh, hoping to cover up the some rent fee. For you know, 20 years, we've been giving back to just about every organization we could over the years and been involved and been up at four in the morning making a donation to a turkey trot or you know a 5k run and we were always the one giving and uh, to be in that situation where we actually needed some help and the city was right there to help us was just tremendous. You know I really appreciate that our current parents and family members supporting and I also want I also glad grateful that uh, we're getting some help and needed from the city of Naperville to keep moving forward throughout this pandemic. I mean, I couldn't have asked for, you know, a, a better partner in the community uh, than the city. And I, and I know the city's done a fantastic job um, and the chamber and everyone else that's been involved with the, you know, communication and, and everything else that's been going on. I and mean, I feel like, I, you know, we have someone there that we can listen to and, and rely on, which is, which is great. And now a word from one of our presenting sponsors. At International Truck, we have the broadest work truck lineup in the industry. Visit internationaltrucks.com. International Truck, it's up time. I want to thank Kaylin Rizvald at the Chamber and Christine Jeffries at the Naperville Development Partnership for partnering on this grant. Your commitment to connecting our businesses with these opportunities means more doors stayed open. And open doors equal a stable tax base that helps support our city's financial foundation. We quickly realized when the pandemic began that the city was not immune to its economic impact. But unlike the private sector, the city could simply not cut staff when the economy slowed down. When a resident or a business calls 911, it doesn't matter if it's a slow economy. We're still expected to respond. If anything, our residents and businesses needed their local government more in 2020 than in other years. I'm so proud that we did not cut city services in 2020. To me, that's really a huge success. Not every community was that fortunate. So how did we weather last year's economic storm? Thanks to our staff, our city council kept a close watch on trends to be able to respond at the right time. We lowered expenses early on, including reducing our capital budget by almost $25 million. And we ended the year with the general fund expenses $2 million under budget. In the initial months of the pandemic, we saw certain taxes come in lower than expected, like sales tax, food and beverage tax, and hotel motel tax. But we saw those same taxes begin to recover by December. However, because of the pandemic's unknowns, we made a strategic decision last summer to be flexible on how we commit our revenue streams in 2021. Our goal was to maintain services that you expect from us without raising property taxes. We took advantage of historically low interest rates to bond for our capital projects at what is a better value in the long run. We borrowed $16 million in 2020, and we refinanced $23 million in existing debt. And because of that refinancing, we'll save more than $2 million worth of interest over the next eight years. Thanks in part to $7 million in Federal CARES Act money, we ended the year with $2 million revenue surplus in our general fund. Let me repeat that. We ended the year with a $2 million revenue surplus in a pandemic economy. This is no small feat when the early estimate was an $18 million shortfall in an effort to protect our long-term financial health, we budgeted conservatively for 2021. After all, it was that same long-term mindset that paid off for us in 2020. And it was the financial principles we put in place in 2015 and the following years of focusing on paying down debt, replenishing our cash reserves, and investing in our infrastructure that provided the solid foundation that carried us through last year. As a result of our financial discipline, we had so many levers to pull without relying on increased property taxes. We were able to exercise financial flexibility, maintain our city's savings account, and support our local businesses when they needed us most. It's that solid track record of responsible finances and abundant opportunities that gave developers the confidence to continue investing in Naperville even during a pandemic. 
For example, along East Ogden Avenue, construction continues on our second Costco warehouse. That warehouse is expected to open this fall, but has already added to our local economy with their halo effect. Right next door, people began moving into the Vantage Naperville apartments just last month. These 112 apartments on the site of the former Regency Inn bring affordable housing to this corridor. We took one of the city's most problematic properties and replaced it with a modern building that helps bring more balance to our housing needs. I'm very excited that the new boutique grocery store is opening soon at the southwest corner of Naper Boulevard and Ogden. As I said, our economic foundation gives businesses the confidence that Naperville is a solid investment. And wow, are they investing. At the city, we managed 75 concept meetings in 2020, six more than 2019, and 12 more than in 2018. Think about that. We did more in 2020 than in each of the past two years. I'm proud that so many businesses chose to invest in Naperville, even in the face of uncertainty. Let's welcome some of our newest businesses. And now a word from one of our presenting sponsors. Our local economy gives us the financial foundation to provide the city services to the community, which is a second pillar we'll discuss. And just as businesses needed to pivot, the city needed to pivot as well. We maintained our core in-person services from day one of the pandemic, and we took our other services online in a matter of weeks, even days, to keep the city business running. Within a week of the stay-at-home order, we began accepting home building and emergency repair permits electronically. And within six weeks, we were accepting all building permits remotely. In fact, from May to December of last year, we issued almost 5,600 permits, over 400 more than the same period in 2019. Our success isn't limited to our ability to pivot during the pandemic. And that's the sixth time now that I've used the word pivot, I know. It's also how we kept our day-to-day -day services running like our electric utility, making sure that every customer received their connections on time during the pandemic. And the measure of how often our customers were without power last year was a mere 14 minutes. That's just outstanding work by our electric utility. It's even more impressive 
when you consider all the severe weather we had last summer. When other communities were out of power for days, our residents had consistent service. I want to give a special welcome to the new electric director, Brian Groth, who took over at the start of the year following former director Lucy Podlesny's retirement. We know the utility is in good hands moving forward. That same goes for our water utility, which began installing new modern water meters on homes and businesses last month. This project, known as Water 2.0, and this technology will make it easier for you to track your water usage and allow us to take readings remotely. And our core services don't stop at the utilities. Our police and our fire departments are the heart of this community, especially during a public health crisis. Police Chief Bob Marshall and Fire Chief Mark Pecknitis led teams that have shown exemplary service during the pandemic. I'm proud to share that our firefighter paramedics had zero COVID cases through their work. Think about that. These are high risk, frontline workers, and we had zero cases. On top of this, fire continued to excel in their everyday duties. And this, of course, makes a life-saving difference. A great example is our fire department's pit crew CPR program, which began in 2018. Pit crew puts the right number of people and actions in place when a patient has stopped breathing and their heart has stopped beating. Think of it like a race car pit crew. Everyone had a specific role to play. And the most critical actions, like chest compressions, have multiple people assigned to them. Check this out. Since we put this program in place, we've seen a 30% increase in the survival rates. It's 30%. And this year, Naperville's protocols will be put in place throughout the Edward Hospital region, making us the first multi-agency EMS system in the entire country to adopt this protocol. We're leading the charge, but that's no surprise from a department that is devoted to leadership. That same level of dedication can be found in our police department, which is why SafeWise named us the safest place to raise a child in 2020. And it's also part of the reason why Niche.com, again, named us the best place to raise a family and one of the best cities to live in. In the year that put the spotlight on law enforcement and its role in our communities, Naperville has led the way in community-oriented policing. Naperville police were training on implicit and explicit bias and de-escalation long before it was expected across the country. And a major focus has been on crisis intervention training to better handle mental health calls. Out of our 177 sworn police officers, 73 have already received this training and dozens more can become certified this summer. The department is preparing for the future in a variety of ways. For example, body cameras, which is a major topic of discussion nationally, is something our police force was already pursuing and the city council had already approved as part of its capital budget. This year is dedicated to research and testing, updating procedures, policy development, and implementing a pilot program. And work continues on implementing the next-gen 911 system to allow people to text 911 from their cell phones. We hope to have this feature in place later this year as well. This forward-thinking approach helped our police department receive its ninth reaccreditation in 2020. And I'm proud that our 911 section received its seventh reaccreditation last year as well. Truly, all departments deserve a round of applause for their tireless efforts throughout this pandemic. All of these services I've discussed are provided by people, our third pillar that the city is built on. And while I may be mentioning people third, make no mistake, our people are the foundation of all of our pillars. And as mayor, I want to recognize the eight council members who sit beside me on the dais. Earlier this month, we said goodbye to three council members who served the city well for a collective 24 years. Councilwoman Judy Broadhead, and Councilman Kevin Coyne and Councilman John Crumman. All of them brought a deep understanding of public service and community to their work. Thank you for your service. I also want to acknowledge the passing of former City Councilman Dave Wentz in January. Dave was a longtime community volunteer and believed in giving back to the place you live. And that belief lives on in our newest leaders. 
I'm pleased to welcome Ian Holzhauer, Jennifer Bruzan Taylor, and Paul Leong to the council. And of course, we want to welcome back Benny White. They'll make a difference in the lives of our people, which includes all of you, the residents, business owners, and visitors. And these numbers are growing. Naperville had the highest census response rate in the country for cities our size. In a state that has lost population, Naperville continues to be a place where people want to live, learn, work, and play. A special thank you to Mark Rice and Ashfag Said, who spearheaded our complete count committee last year. And even in a pandemic, we looked for ways to make living in Naperville more affordable for our residents. In fact, the cost of living for the average resident has actually decreased since last year. It's pretty impressive, right? And our cost of living also remains one of the lowest of our surrounding communities. We held the line even during a pandemic economy. That's local government working for the people. And we have so many organizations that have worked for our community this past year. As the vaccine rollout began, we saw our businesses rise to the occasion, like the Mall of India, Jewel Osco, and the YMCA, and the Islamic Center of Naperville, who all hosted vaccination clinics. And Naperville wouldn't be the city it is without our not-for-profit organizations. They see a need, and they meet it. Like when the Naperville JC stepped forward to make the Smart Park a reality, they gave us one of the most popular gathering areas in Naperville, and they're paying back their 10-year commitment seven years early. That's giving back and keeping a financial promise in these challenging times. While they're taking care of people's emotional, spiritual, or physical needs, all of these groups stepped up when we needed them most last year. And it's my pleasure to take a moment on behalf of the entire community to thank them. Just as we faced the pandemic as a community, we also faced last year's calls for social justice. Like many cities around the country, we saw numerous protests and calls for action on our streets and sidewalks. Unfortunately, one took a destructive turn in our downtown last summer. And while I was angry and saddened by the violence that took place on June 1st, I was lifted up by what took place on June 2nd. Community members came together to clean up the damage left behind and reminded us that we are stronger when we come together. Every person in Naperville has inherent dignity and value in our community. 
But it's not enough to just say it. We need to live it. Earlier this spring, we welcomed new diversity, equity, and inclusion manager, Dr. Janice Williams, to our organization. Her work will put action behind our commitment to honoring diversity and making sure everyone has an inclusive role in Naperville's future. Dr. Williams also works with our new Human Rights and Fair Housing Commission that will educate our community on these topics and recommend new programs and policies. And it's really our programs that make Naperville a desirable and forward-thinking city. Our programs, Naperville's fourth pillar, look at the challenges of today to determine solutions for tomorrow. But to set programs, we need to be clear on our priorities. So this year, we'll bridge the past to our future as part of Naperville's strategic planning process. Our goal is to identify the city's vision for the future and then take action. And of course, we'll be taking input from everybody during the strategic planning process. In order to help with building next year's budget, the goal is to have the new strategic plan adopted by October. Also, clear planning help us make decisions in areas like sustainability, cultural amenities, and infrastructure. And speaking of sustainability, this year, Naperville installed 3,500 solar panels that were added at a Springbrook treatment plant, along with 160 on the electric service center. And together, energy from these panels is enough to power 152 homes for a year. We're seeing more homes and businesses add solar in our city. Last year, 209 installations took place versus just 34 in 2019. Some of you may know that in 2011, I installed a 150 kilowatt hour solar power plant on the rooftop of my business. So this is something I've personally invested in. And as a city, we gave out over $400,000 in renewable energy grants last year. But we know we can do more. So this year, we're hiring a sustainability coordinator. And this spring, we heard from our sustainability task force, commonly known as NEST, on how we can move forward with reducing our environmental footprint. Their sustainable 2036 plan will get a deeper dive by council this summer. In addition to a sustainable community, we also want a city that emphasizes culture and quality of life. In early 2020, we had Cancun, Mexico as our third and newest sister city, and we look forward to a unique partnership with them. And the Riverwalk 2031 Master Plan outlines ways that we can update one of Naperville's most coveted cultural amenities by our 200th birthday like expanding the path south to Edward Hospital, updating the popular Grand Pavilion area, and adding a new nature garden. Moving on to our infrastructure program, we have a very important project coming up. Motorists will see North Aurora Road between Frontenac and Fairway Drive widened in the next two years. They'll also see the sidewalk, trail, and lighting improvements once the project is complete. And this is just the first step in improving this important connection with Aurora. Future work includes replacing the railroad bridge and widening North Aurora Road. All of this can only be achieved by working together with everyone who has a stake in the area. Indeed, our progress, especially this year, is due to the partnerships forged in less trying times. If anything, the last year has reminded us all that uncertainty is, it's, it's certain. But when we lean into the foundations that supported us in the good times, we'll have the stability we need during the uncertain times. And from there, we can take a step back, reassess, and begin again. I believe that next year we'll be together again in person for this event. But until then, I wanted to end this year's speech by taking a look back at 2020 and showing us where we've been and where we're going. Because a community like Naperville doesn't just settle for what was. It shows the region and the nation what we can become. We're not going back. They say every generation has its moments. The ones where you remember every little detail. You never forget where you were, what you said, what you did, what you saw. You can't. It becomes part of who you are. In March of 2020, we had that moment. What was once the everyday 
became the impossible. But in the moments of the last year, the sad, the celebratory, the heartfelt, the hopeful, and the challenging, we found what was possible. We found ways to turn tragedy into triumph, to come together even when apart. Now we move forward into a new reality, a future not expected, but given to us nonetheless. What will we choose? As a city, we choose action. We choose to push our own boundaries. We choose to make something good out of this defining moment. We choose to remake our future, not in spite of our circumstances, but because of them. We choose to lead. We can't predict every moment in the future, but we can make each moment count. What will you choose? We choose to move forward with optimism for a new day that combines the best of what was with what we now know we can become. I choose to move forward with the support of our community, a community that never quits. And we've proved that we can rise to the occasion and we're going to keep on rising. Thank you for the past year, Naperville, and here's to many more. Thank you so much, Mayor Cherico and the city of Naperville for your valuable reflection on what exactly makes the foundation for our great city. Thank you again to our presenting sponsors, Navistar and Spinezi, and our event sponsors, BMO Harris Bank and Naperville Bank and Trust. Again, it's the support of our sponsors that allows us to provide this program both virtually and in person. And we appreciate the support of each one of our guests as we know that you understand the value of engaging inside of your community. It's what makes Naperville an ideal destination to live, work, and do business. If you would like to learn more about the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce and our robust calendar of virtual and hybrid programs like this one, visit naperville.net. I look forward to seeing you around as our community begins to open up or perhaps virtually, as the Chamber will continue to offer hybrid events like this one for our members. Remember, the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce's goal is to move your business forward by being your advocate and your resource for our community. Thank you so much for joining us today.